Hi, and welcome to my channel, Laura's Library Card. So it's June already, which means it's time for the May wrap up. So I read 10 full length books and one short story in the month of May, which I had to guess on that length of the short story, but it's just over 3,500 pages altogether. Wow. Probably not my record ever, but pretty dang good considering I started a booktube channel and took kind of probably eight days off sort of right around the time that I started my channel. So if you're a regular watcher, a lot of these will sound familiar, but I'm just going to quickly run through what I've read and try to try, 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 try to give a very brief synopsis for each one and and what my rating is and uh, whether or not I might read more by that author, that kind of thing. I started off the month with two books from the Wicked Villains series by Katie Robert. The first one is Desperate Measures, and I have a very long, very rambly review um, on my channel, so I'll put that up here, but um, it's very long and rambly. And the second book in that series, which I also read, was called Learn My Lesson. So Desperate Measures, um, I didn't love. I ultimately gave it two out of five stars, and that's because I had a lot of issues with this Jasmine Jafar story. Um, there are a lot of themes of dominance and submissive, and that part didn't really bother me so much as I felt like the lines of consent were heavily blurred and or crossed in this erotic romance. So not a favorite start to the month. Learn My Lesson was uh, in a similar vein, also an erotic romance, uh, and this one had Hades, Meg, and Hercules, and I enjoyed it more because I felt like there was a better story arc and character arc, and also the lines of consent were never crossed in my mind. There was very clear rules. The historical romance that I managed to squeeze in this month was Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. That's the first book in the League of Extraordinary Women series. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I thought the main character was pretty uh, believable and, you know, she was spunky without being too dramatically rebellious for the time period. Um, I did sort of feel like now that I was thinking about it, I wondered if there was sort of Pride and Prejudice themes happening. I, I got that vibe strongly, but I don't remember feeling that way at the time. So I'm not sure if that's what one month's perspective will give for you. But I like that book quite a lot and I gave Bringing Down the Duke four out of five stars and it was a top contender for my favorite of the month. The short story I mentioned was Forbidden Protector by London Hale, and I listened to this on Read Me Romance. Um, I thought it was pretty good. It was just sort of middle of the road for me, kind of forgettable ultimately. But, um, I, you know, looking back on it, I, I appreciated that there was a little bit of internal conflict and external conflict. And, you know, for a short story, which I'm, is not my forte, uh, I thought, you know, it was turned out pretty well and it was steamy. Speaking of steamy, I read one Net Galley book so far this month. It was my first one I was ever approved for called The Van Birch Incident. And yes, I did a very long rambly review that is still going to be coming out someday. Um, so The Van Birch Incident was actually sort of a complicated book. It's a romance, but while The Van Birch Incident is a romance uh, between a stepbrother and stepsister, uh, somehow the, the author never managed to make it feel gross. Um, and another major theme in the book is overcoming a sexual assault. Um, and I felt like those were balanced really well. And I liked that the main character overcame a lot of her preconceived notions and kind of struggled through. And I think really did make progress on healing from the assault. I give the Van Birch incident four out of five stars. But, I also read Twilight and I read that in anticipation of the Chandler Ainsley live show, which I did listen to and, you know, try to chime in on. And it was kind of fun just to visit this uh, series in anticipation of the release of Midnight Sun that's happening in August. So I will be also finishing the rest of the books in the series before Midnight Sun comes out. And Twilight, I give three out of five stars. I know it has problems, but there's also a strong nostalgia factor here. 
Next, we get to Contemporary Athon, where I read three books actually over the course of Memorial Day weekend. So I vlogged a lot about that. I'll put vlog, you know, one up here for Contemporary Athon if you want to hear more about this. But I read both. Bromance Book Club and Undercover Bromance, the first and second in the series. And both of those are by author Lissa K. Adams. And I like them a lot. Um, I had a Bromance Book Club as a top contender for my favorite of the month. Um, I was a little more disappointed with the sequel. I just felt like the uh, strength and um, themes that were used in the first book with using a romance book as a like a guidebook uh, that was kind of not carried through the second book so it was a little bit let down in the second book. So Bromance Book Club I gave four out of five stars and Undercover Bromance I gave 2.5 out of five stars. And the last book that I read during Contemporary Athon was Well Met by Jen DeLuca, which I thought was really cute. It was a story about a Renaissance fair and how uh, and it was a romance and how these two characters meet. And um, there was also a very strong like feminist viewpoint where the main character, Emily, is figuring out what she wants to do with her life. So it was really nice to have like kind of two main plots happening. Well Met earned four out of five stars from me, and I definitely want to find out uh, what's going to happen in the sequel coming this fall. So I lied. I definitely finished a second historical romance this month, and it was Wicked in the Wallflower by Sarah McLean. Um, and I liked this story. Um, I didn't, for some reason, it was just something about this book that made it easy to put down and walk away and, and just kind of leisurely come back. I didn't want to just tear through it. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty... Uh, different from a lot of the ones that I've read where the lady in the situation is the like upper class and the man in this romance is a lower class uh, character and usually it's the other way around or it's like a duke who's fallen from grace or um, something along those lines. So it's kind of interesting to read a criminal's perspective on things but um, you know, it was good. I, for me, it was a three out of five stars. It was, you know, it was a good solid romance, but not like amazing have to keep reading. And the last book I managed to squeeze in on, on the 30th of May was The Sundown Motel uh, by Simone St. James. And I thought it was fine. Um, it's a paranormal thriller mystery. It's told in two perspectives. One is in 1982 of a girl who we know right up front has gone missing because the other perspective is her niece in 2017 who's investigating um, her aunt's mysterious disappearance. But it is paranormal because there are ghosts that are haunting this motel, the Sundown Motel, um, and it's sort of mysterious as to what they might have had to do with the disappearance of her aunt. I read The Sundown Motel because it was the first selection of the Page Turner Book Club and uh, I was really pleased with this choice and I'm looking forward to their June choice which is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I'll put a link to the Page Turner Book Club announcement uh, that I found on Mayor Reed's channel down in the description. So. As I wrap up um, reflecting on the month and this list, I've decided that my favorite book for May is Bromance Book Club. And it was really, really close. It was like almost a dead tie with bringing down the Duke. Um, but I feel like the Bromance Book Club brought a little extra flavor and oomph that I haven't um, experienced in a romance in a while. It was about a couple that, um, it was about an established couple that was struggling and going through problems. and. Also, there was this whole fun element of using romance books as like a manual to learn how to better communicate with each other. Um, or, you know, Gavin was using that as a manual to try to communicate better with his wife. And um, there were a lot of funny side characters. I really rooted for the main couple. I could also really appreciate Thea's strength um, and her kind of debate throughout the book as to how to save this marriage that you know with this guy that she loves but also like there have been problems so like you know should she or shouldn't she try to make the marriage work also in may i actually have a lot of books that i received and or purchased 
So I'm, I'm very excited to have received this beautiful copy of The Red Queen uh, by Victoria Aveyard. It has sprayed edges. It's gorgeous. My friend Sam is so generous, especially since The Shadows Between Us was also a gift from Sam, and I'm really looking forward to reading that. I was planning on reading it in June, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to hold off or not. I also purchased A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, and um, I actually have still not read this as of June. I had sort of intended to participate in a Hungry Games readathon, and it's been pushed, so I haven't decided if I want to go ahead and read this because it's so new, but at the same time, I kind of want to like wait for the Hunger Games. Um, ooh, we'll find out. And these last two are actually books that were gifted to me because I'm part of an awesome group for my Wheel of Time readathon. So they, we decided to do a cool book ninja group where people send each other books anonymously. So I was ninja two books. One is All the Light We Cannot See, which I read a couple years ago and I remember loving. I remember crying, I remember finding it so moving, and I had been meaning to actually get, a, get back to the book. Um, and so I thought this is a perfect opportunity. Ah! So I thought this is the perfect gift I could have received from that group. And I also received Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Um, I love this book. I read it in college. And so I really remember identifying with um, Kath, even though I'm not a fan fiction writer, I had, you know, read fan fiction and loved it. And um, I loved the Simon and Baz story that she wrote. And I dove into Carry On and Wayward Son like wholeheartedly. So I was really excited to get this uh, sort of original part of the uh, series. So lucky me, those are all the books that I received or purchased in May. So those are my books for May. If you liked any of those books or if you hated any of those books or if you have any recommendations uh, similar to the ones that I said that I liked, please, uh, please comment down below. Um, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to hear more about romance books that I'm reading because I've already got a number of them lined up for June. Thanks so much. Bye.